So what you're going to need is some pens. Maybe you only probably need one, but I like more. Then some paper. So I'm the Word Nerd, and this is Kind of the Cost Ministries. Let's dig deeper. Today we're going to dig deeper and do some verse mapping. So first I want to talk about the steps of studying the Bible. So it's prayer, observation, interpretation, and application. So let's jump into step one. Father, I pray that you will guide our minds and hearts as we dig deeper into your word. Draw us closer to you. Let the Holy Spirit guide us to the truth. Give us understanding, knowledge, and wisdom as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, now we're going to get to observation. Observation can be broken down a lot further than what I'm going to do today. So I suggest if you want a further breakdown of it to go and check out my playlist of how to study the Bible and it breaks it down a lot further but basically you're just going to observe what the text actually states making sure you understand what literary style you're studying and also the context and yeah we're just gonna jump in and define some words so knowledge doesn't necessarily equal understanding so that's why we're gonna do some verse mapping which is pretty much defining words but it's more than that at the same time so yeah let's just get into it so i use dot grid paper you can use regular paper whatever suits yourself you know whatever whatever you have i like dot grid got this uh, journal at um, walmart and it was pretty cheap so today we're going to be studying first peter 3 15 through 16. so what you're going to do is leave space on the top bottom and sides of the scripture and make sure you leave space in between that so we're going to define the word but these are the apps that i use while i am studying um, but right now we're going to just talk about the blue letter bible app so you go to the blue letter bible app it is also online you go to the top and you click that and that's going to take you to all the books of the bible you click on the one you want click on the chapter and you scroll down to the verse you want so we're going to do first peter three fifteen, and all you're going to do is click on that then you're going to click on the top option which is interlinear you're going to see the english and also the greek words and that's what we're looking for so what you're going to do is want to tap the greek word and that's going to bring you uh, more information about that word so what we're mostly looking for is what type of speech or what part of speech it is so this is a conjunction and so that's basically what we're looking for but i also recommend that you also look for on the bottom of your screen it tells you what the word has been translated throughout the Bible and you can get a better understanding of the word by that but remember words the meaning of words um, is really due to context so what we're gonna just focus on right now is the part of speech and it's a conjunction so we're gonna jump on over to Merriam-Webster dictionary this is the main dictionary that I use and you type in but you make sure that it is a defining conjunction makes a difference and then you look at the words or you look at the definitions and decide which ones you're going to write down um, i like to choose ones that make sense with the context of scripture that i'm studying um, some will not make any sense and i don't feel the need to write them down you can write as many or less as you want i think i wrote about three for this one so yeah let's just jump into the verse mapping so i circle the words write down the definition box it and then draw a line to that word i like colors so of course i'm going to use colors so but is on the contrary on the other hand and then i wrote the definition for lord before i wrote the definition for sanctify i don't know why i did that but sanctify is to set apart to a sacred purpose or religious use to impart or impute sacredness lord is one having authority hearts is your mind will and emotions basically you uh, ready is prepared mentally or physically for some experience or action prepared for immediate use immediately available and then i also define prepare is to make ready beforehand for purpose use or act activity 
to put in a proper state of mind to work out the details of plan in advance. Then we have always, at all times, at any rate, in any event. And then we have give an answer. So this is one word in the Greek, and it is actually the word apologia, which actually we get the word apologetics from. And so the definition is basically something spoken or written in reply to a question or a correct response. So that's the definition of answer. And so to make that a verb, uh, you're going to just basically you give something smoke spoken or written reason is a statement offered in explanation or justification or rational ground or motive the thing that makes some fact intelligible a sufficient ground of explanation or of logical defense hope is a confident expectation of good based on the promises of god uh, meekness is enduring and jury with patience and without resentment not violent or strong moderate and then fear is the passion of our nature, which excites us to prov provide for our security on the approach of evil. And I kind of thought on that one a little bit um, because I think there's different definitions. But I feel like this type of fear that is saying is v it's accurate. So, yeah. So we're going to go down to verse 16. I write the same thing and giving space. And then we're going to define some more words. Good is virtuous, right, or commendable. Conscience is basically two words, con, with, and then knowledge, and of right, moral, ashamed, feeling shame, guilt, or disgrace. A curse is to charge with a fault or defense. Conversation is conduct or behavior, and it is also oral exchange of a sentiment, observation, opinions, or ideas. And now we're going to get into step three, which is interpretation. So the interpretation that I have for this is that Peter, which, who is the author, is saying that you need to have an answer for people that ask you questions of your hope. You, our attitude should be different, even in times of trials and hardships. And people should see that and want and probably ask you you should and need to have an answer for them but there's a step before the answers and that is to sanctify the lord in your heart that's to set god apart from all the other things in your life putting him first reading studying the bible prayer and everything else that goes with god should be their priorities spreading the gospel especially as you answer people make sure that you do so in a respectful way in love patience and being humble knowing god will judge your answers when, yes, when people try to say that you're doing evil by answering, when you do this in meekness and in love, you know that nothing you have said is wrong and that people that are accusing you will be ashamed because they know that they're accusing you wrongfully or falsely for your conduct and speech. These days, people hate Christians because they hate God. So sometimes we might have to go through difficult situations, but if you do the right thing, there's really nothing to worry about. So next step is application. So basically the application for this is study the word and have answers on why you have hope, even in a miserable situations, not just because the Bible says so, but a real thought out answer that uses the Bible as a foundation and incorporates your testimony and logic. This may require you to really study the Bible again and find out what you really believe, but it's worth it. God bless.